Hong, welcome back to the third break here on Morning Thailand where we take a look at a little bit more of political situation here in Thailand. As I said yesterday, we've got news of the sudden resignation of one important people, mm -hmm. as we can say. He's the Kun Wasan Sai Pisut, the Constitution Court President. Yesterday, he announced his resignation and not just from the top post, he also resigned from the court panel. Wow. Two positions like here. not happy mm -hmm. with his work? It seems that he had to because when he got into the post, he was appointed president of the Constitution Court back in October of 2010. He said that he would be in the top in the job for no more than two years. So he said this time he would live up to his promise to quit the court presidency because it's almost two years in his job already mm -hmm. in October 2013, right? So actually he intended to tender the resignation on May the 2nd. However, at the time there were rally of the red shirts in front of the Constitution Court to demand the ouster of its night judges. So it seems that there's a chaos going on with the Constitution Court. So he just submit the resignation letter to the court judges last Wednesday and wow. it would be effective on the 1st of August I believe the back in several months ago the red shirt protester who rallied in front of the Constitution Court say the court uh, had violated the democratic principles after they had agreed to consider whether the government-backed effort to rewrite the sections of the charter were constitutional or not. So it seems that the red shirt protesters are not satisfactory. They're going to the Constitution Court pressuring them to resign. Mm -hmm. So Kun Wasan sees that the situation has already eases and he tendered his resignation. Okay, so it's not like he's really not happy with his work, mm -hmm. but it's more like he already said it. Mm -hmm. So he just um, live up to the promises. But we know that the Constitution Court has been under a lot of pressure. Yeah, it seems like they has taken on a lot of cases and everyone seems to mm -hmm. want to go there. Let's just put it that way. So a lot of work in his hand is probably, you know, he's probably look at overall picture and thinks that it's the right time to mm -hmm. step down, perhaps. Now, um, take a look at another person who, well, not step down, but more or less being pushed down <laughs> um, at this point, Kun, let's just call him Weerapon. Right, we, his we, real Rapun, name. Right? Weerapon, Weerapon Supon. Yeah, right, Weerapon Supon, or the former um, monk that's still scandalous, mm -hmm. you know, because when we say his former scandalous monk, you might think that he's, his scandals become a former ones, but no. He's still like moving on and it seems to be accumulating at this point. Now, I will go into the oppositions um, mm -hmm. because obviously a lot of people, finally the followers, I have been saying this for quite some times already that I think the followers should know by now mm -hmm. that he's like a big fraud and you know he's not something that should actually be worshipped. And obviously a lot of people, uh, if you take a look at the front pages today, you might find a picture of people well, not people, but of the items that belongs to um, Kun Wirapun or mm -hmm. Luang Pu Nen Kham, former Luang Pu Nen Kham, has been burnt. Like they, they just kind of like throw everything together and create a bonfire out of it because mm -hmm. obviously um, they no longer believe that he has such power or he is worthy of being worshipped anymore. Now they say that a lot of people were actually quite upset, obviously, and um, at this point they say that... They um, should be. Yeah, th like I would be too. <laughs> and the thing is, um, after all this that happened, all the incidents, they say that um, some of them actually took down the picture that used to be, you know, in their house, mm -hmm. like his picture. And they say that a lot of people who um, look into, th especially those collectors mm -hmm. who collect um, all these amulets, so on and so forth, that uh -huh. has been done by well, him. Well, these are the brochures showing the amulets of Nen Kham. Yeah, and, and at this point they say that um, some of those people who, you know, dated back to seven, six years ago, mm -hmm. um, they say that at this point, um, those amulets that used to be valuable and, you know, 
as they, they say that some they bought as high as like 20 grams mm -hmm. um, per amulet. Right now, it just almost a zero. Well, they say it's, you know, you can sell it for two baht. So at this point, I think if it's a stock market, that's the collapse of a stock <laughs> market at this point. Now they say that uh, another person said that uh, in Tak province said that he has lost over 100 grams because he, you know, also collecting all these amulets that Hoping it would, the prices would rise in the future. Yeah, but at this point, obviously, you don't have that, you know, power, the serenity anymore that people would believe in, you know, with your jet and your Ray Ban. Uh -huh. So, you know, that was happened. But um, I think they, another, another interesting thing is they found his house, a so-called house or residential area, in California. Right. And they say that it was situated right you know, around, surrounded by mm -hmm. um, nice view of mountains. Mm -hmm. And there's like a big Buddha statue there as well. And that was in California. So he's mm -hmm. living large. And they, they see that um, Mercedes Benz there as well. They're still trying to find him. But of course, I think um, one of the supporters, at least, um, has came out. Mm -hmm. And I will let what, you take... About, about the, the house in California, mm -hmm. reporters had tracked him down using the GPS from Google Maps. Nice, right? So technology. So because th uh, this time Google Map can use as a navigation or a GPS. So they got into his residence in the United States. However, they got no court order to raid a house or. Oh, okay. So technically, it's not. And now that you speak about his right hand man, if <laughs> his right hand may have the front page of some newspaper here. I'm not sure which one. However, if you see a man dressing in quite we have a footage. Strange we have costume. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, and he went to the United States. There you go. There you go. The United <laughs> States Embassy in Bangkok. And oh, he dear. was demanding the embassy to reconsider the Thai authority demand just to revoke the mm -hmm. passport of Virapon. Mm -hmm. This man named Sukhum. What's something I can... Right. I cannot find the information. Well, so he was the right hand man, mm -hmm. and most of the time he came out to defend Luang Pu Nen Kham. In a lot of cases, so he, right, he came out with a lot of accusations and also to defend Luang Pu Nen Kham, as mm -hmm. I said. And reporters asked him why he just have to dress like this. Right. Because this is weird. This is like a traditional costume. Thai costume when you see in a play, like folk play. Right. Mm -hmm. Or we call like not normal traditional Thai costume that we wear to festival or... Yeah, it's activity. only in a play. And so you know, it's really weird here. Mm -hmm. If you dress like this, going to the embassy, he said that most of the time that he come out and talk to the media, mm -hmm. he was not mentioned in any news. Right. No one cares about him. The so funny part is his cheek is actually um, brighter than yours, Kun Fai. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so pink. So that's a full costume. Very good. You've got full makeup there going well, well with Well, I think he's trying to outfit. make a statement there. Mm -hmm. You know, like, look at me, listen to me, please help my mm -hmm. so-called monk, which is no longer, he has been disrobed, seriously. So it's I'm very pretty sure interesting. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that the U.S. Embassy would, would be <laughs> quite interesting. And this too. tactic really works. He was on the front page this morning. Yeah, but you know, like you could have won anything and being on the front page. But you know, it just show you that when you have up like some people who oppose you, you still have some people who would blindly support you uh -huh. at this point. So it'll be interesting. I, I can't but I wait. I bet he got a lot of money. Right. I can't wait for Luang Pu Nen Kham or Kun Wirapun to actually come back to Thailand because, mm -hmm. you know, it would be so much fun. Maybe we could do a phone in since, you know, oh. right? Phone interviews. Right, because he, he had probably been to would France, be able to, to United States. Exactly. So he got a lot of information so to talk to us. And apart from mm -hmm. that, the investigation about the woman, also an 11 year old boy whose mother claimed that he was son right. of the Wirapun, the they got the DNA testing, the result already mm -hmm. that the woman and the, the, the boy mm -hmm. is actually related. So they will get this result to the family and youth court in Sisaket province. So asking for Wirapon to undergo the DNA testing pro procedure. Mm, okay, so it's not a claim.
Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to another case, which is actually quite big news as well. Now, Confide, we have talked a lot about the contamination in the packaged rice, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the government want, time and time again tried to tell us that there's no contamination, it's our rumors, and obviously this time yesterday, um, Kun Sari Ong Som Wang, which is uh, working with the Foundation for Consumer, mm -hmm. has came out and said that they actually tested all these packaged rice and they found that um, there are some contamination in these packages mm -hmm. and they say that um, out of 46 um, samples all together um, there's only 12 that did not find any contamination and 34 of them actually found some contamination so mm -hmm. 12 of them that's only account for about um, 26 Point one um, of the in terms of um, how much of the rice that has been not been contaminated. Now we're talking about at this point all this um, contamination that might have been in the particular packaged rice. They say that um, out of all these samples, mm -hmm. they did not meet the. They call it Codex. Is is mm -hmm. one of those standard that you know, you allow to have how much um, contamination in it. And they say that one of them, well, the, according to Codex, you're mm -hmm. supposed to be at about five, uh, 50 PMM. And at this point, they found that one of the samples has 67.4 PMM. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure like how, how bad that is, but if I'm eating the rice, I would prefer that we have none. Mm -hmm. at all because that re the the residue the substances here is the methyl bromide is mm -hmm. the substance that they use in the fumigation process to drive away insects or ants from the rice grains right so once you already finish this process you got to clean cleanse all these substances from mm -hmm. the rice grain but there were actually residue exactly so, so it's normal so to have some substances in the rice package but mm -hmm. not exceed the limited standard mm -hmm. so the best thing you can do this is what you can do just to wrap this up here very quickly there there is a sign that has been um produced by the the food and drugs administration mm -hmm. is a picture of almost like a palm mm -hmm. you know together they call it mu panom Mm -hmm. or you know a picture of a palm is supposed to be um, stamped onto each of the rice packages that tested for sure positive so some kind of like that looks like this like a palm okay like this so yeah look for that that's that's what i'm trying to say um if you don't see that on package right maybe stay away from it even mm -hmm. though it's cheaper it might not you know, i'll just look into the newspaper or new sources online mm -hmm, exactly. which one is safe to eat which one is not mm -hmm. so let's take a short break because kun chain will come back and then give us a little bit more updates in terms of southern violence so stay tuned